just about to do it. Grab my rod and leave. What is going on, legends? I'm excited about this one. We're back in the garage. Um, and tonight we're going to be going down to the local jetty, do a bit of shark fishing. I've been down to the local spot on fishing in Mount Gambia. Shout out Jamie and Craig. And um, just picked up a relatively cheap setup from Penn. I absolutely love these reels. Uh, these are $100 and I get a span with 50 pound braid, which is plenty for any surf fishing, even your decent sized sharks really. Um, or bloody big gummy shark you can get on your 50 pound braid. Doing that the wrong way then. 950 pen spin fisher, absolutely incredible reel. The sound on it is sick. That sounds so good when that starts stripping line from a shark or a snapper and the rod starts going off. It's bloody good. Even really, these make pulling in rays good fun because the noise on them. Um, but we're going shark fishing tonight and I'm praying that we get hooked up. And then just picked up a heavy duty boat rod basically, but I'll use this off the beach for drone fishing and this was $70. So relatively cheap setup for $170 plus your braid, you can get set up for going to do a bit of drone fishing um, or shark fishing. I think off the jetty, these are going to be perfect for hopefully hook up and then try and walk it back down to the beach and not contending with really long surf rod. So that's it. That's the rod and reel combo that we're taking down. And then what I've set up last night, um, onto the pool noodle. Everyone must know about using pool noodles for your rigs. Use all of them in the surf. Um, beak hook, I think that's a 10-0, size 10. Onto some wire trace, and then onto some 100 pound leader that I'll tie onto that braid. That's what we're gonna take down. Gonna be using tuna as bait, and hopefully hook up. I'll see you down there. It is a lot windier down here than it said it was going to be. A lot windier. I'm going to go on with a whole trev. And then chuck that out. That's our bait. Shark fishing. Very cold and very windy. These are not the conditions that I was expecting to come down to. It said 16 kilometers an hour on windy. Let's see if we can't attract some in. We might be on here. I was just about to grab my rod and leave. I reckon we might be on. Not sure what we're on to, but we're definitely. Oh, they dropped it. Oh, they dropped it. No. Set the hook. Set the hook. Yeah, we're on. Oh. We're on. We're on. Yes. We're on. Exactly what we came down here for. We're on to a shark. We're on to a shark. Yes. Whew. I've no idea if you can see that on the camera right now. Yes. All right. We're getting there. We're about halfway down the J. Brand new rod and reel. Just breaking it in. Not a bad shark. Not a bad shark. Uh, I'm not gonna have any of this shark to waste. It's gonna get cut up, bled quickly, cut up, and on ice tonight. All right, guys, here we go. 
Here's our shark. Solo mission. We've got our first shark off the Port, Port McDonald jetty. We put this shark out of its misery now. This is going to be coming home. Catch and cook. That's what we wanted. All right, we've just got back. It's not a bad size seven giller. There's still um, some nerves in it, but the fish was killed pretty quickly as soon as it got onto the onto the beach. Um, it's not bad size. Not bad size jaws on it. You can see how, uh, whilst you're snorkeling and that, apparently these do end up biting people. The one thing I do notice already, compared to a gummy shark, is the meat is slightly darker, ever so slightly darker, but we're gonna treat it exactly the same. So the meat on the on the seven giller, it's just ever so slightly more pink, I think. Um, and I've heard completely mixed reviews on this. 50% of people say they're not worth eating and the other 50% say that they're nice and I'm quite looking forward to cooking it up. I imagine it'd be the same sort of thing as um, the Australian salmon. When I first moved to Australia, we were told that it's no good eating, but actually it's just about how you prepare the fish and what you do with it once you catch it, just get it bled, like we have with this. And um, obviously try and waste as little as possible of the animal. I don't think the meat looks too bad at all. Obviously all the fins won't get eaten, but I think there's gonna be some good meat on there. We'll get it all prepared for a good catch and cook. Cut them right back off that way. It's probably could have been bled a little bit better down the beach, but as you saw, I was by myself and priority really was just getting it back and getting it filleted as quick as possible to treat the meat with as much care as possible and um, to try and not waste any of it. This is the, a lot of people already know how to do this, mainly for the people watching this, that, especially back home in England that haven't really done this sort of thing before. Um, I do this when you get snapper or especially gummy shark, I do this straight away on the beach from the head down. Um, we'll just do it from the tail up for the minute to show you what happens when you put the steel wire up the vertebrae, basically just severs all of the, but basically just severs all, <laughs> cat's going crazy. It basically just severs all of the nerves up, up the back. So it stops the any of the fish from moving and it re relaxes all the muscles as well. So you just put the wire up that vertebrae there and you'll see that the fish just starts to flex a bit. And that's just where I'm severing all of the nerves and then all that meat would be nice and relaxed. And you'll see now, that's right the way at the top. So that will that'll go up to there. So that, that wire, when I pull that out, will be the whole length of that fish. Two nice big fillets. We just have to learn where, where all the cartilage actually ran, really. I feel like there's a lot more waste on these than what there is on gummy sharks, which is a bit annoying because I really do hate wasting any of the fish. Um, we, we are getting some nice fillets off of it, which I think it looks like quite nice meat. But you can see that there was a natural line down the side of that where you can just cut right in the middle and open up that meat. So there's a bit more of a bloodline in that middle bit. Let's just fillet this as best that I possibly can. So that we've got just the skin and the fillet off of there. That's still got loads of bloodline in that, but the actual fillet itself isn't too bad. It needs a bit of a wash and maybe just to strip the rest of this bloodline out. don't think this fish would be too bad. I'm really hoping it is. Nice eating. I butchered that. What I'll do is I'll finish off filling, filleting up these fillets. Got a nice big fillet on that one. And um, get some in the freezer. And then we'll see you back for some fish and chips. These have been in the freezer now for about five days because compared to gummy, I think it smelled like ammonia 
very strong compared to gummy sharks. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing what this actually tastes like. It doesn't smell ammonia-y, whatever that word would be. I think it looks pretty nice. There's a bit of a belly and then some fillets off the top. I think what we're gonna do is keep two nice chunky bits and then slice some of these bits up into some smaller bits. Um, first we'll get onto the batter. Pretty sure everyone will know how to make the beer batter, just flour. Beer of choice, mine is always pirate life. Absolutely love this stuff. A little bit of salt, just give that a whisk. I like to have it slightly runnier and you get quite a nice thin, thin batter on the fish, um, especially with the oil that I use as well. I use a mix of olive oil and vegetable oil. This gives it a really nice quick cook. These two are gonna get fish finger treatment. Do one bit to start, do a bit of a test. I think that's ready. Wait for them to rise up like that. I'm just very, very intrigued to know if this is gonna be any good because it's complete 50-50 reviews on it. Everyone that I speak to either hates it or think it's decent. Just looking forward to trying it. Like I said before, it's basically the same as the salmon. A lot of people didn't like eating Australian salmon, but I think if you prepare it right, then it's really nice. Nothing I hate more as well than cooking on these ceramic tops. They're just absolute dog shit, but living in a rental, you don't really get an opportunity or a chance to pick a gas oven. Get the big ones coated as well. Just have them sitting in there for a minute. If you're watching this and have enjoyed it so far, don't forget to give the video a like and sub to the account. All right. Oh, that looks bloody good to me. Looking forward to trying that. Two of the big slabs still to go. Yum. All right, these big ones are going in. Whew. That is looking good. Right in there. Chips are almost ready. Proper English. Even got some peas on the go as well. Seven gillow fillets. I've got to say, they're looking good. And they're tasting good. No ammonia taste to them whatsoever, no smell. I'm, I'm ready to go back down that jetty and catch another one now, I think. They're pretty bloody good. Oh, yes. That looks incredible. Still nice and moist inside, not very oily as well. That oil's drained out of it nice. Nice crispy batter. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Fish and chips, catch and cook, seven gila shark as well. I'm pleasantly surprised with this stuff. Got a bit of tidying up to do now, and we're going to sit down and enjoy our dinner. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and I'll see you in the next one.